Hello everyone. Today we are doing a project inspired by the African mud cloth. The African mud cloth is an African textile or fabric uh, created using fermented mud and plant dyes. And the fabric is used for all different types of things from clothing to accessories. So we are going to create our own design inspired by that. So you're going to need a piece of paper and a pencil. Um, I'm going to have my paper this way, but you can have it this way if you want. It's just a little easier to work with it this way. And the first thing that we're going to do is divide our paper up. So we're going to go in a little bit. We're going to draw a line. We're going to go in a little bit more and draw another line. So try to keep them about the same. If you need to measure, you can use a ruler. You can use like your hand, so a thumb length away. I'm gonna do another one. And then one more. So I wanna try to have five lines across. It's okay if they're not perfect. I mean, four lines across. So it's okay if they're not perfect, like this one has more space than this one, that's fine. So now that we have our lines, we're gonna make them a double line. So right next to it, we're just gonna draw another line next to it. Now we're gonna work on a pattern. So we're gonna do an A, B, C, B, A pattern. So we're gonna go A, B, so we're gonna do one pattern, then another pattern, then a different pattern, and then we're gonna go back down. Okay, so this one won't look like any of the other ones. So let's start off with the middle one first. Um, you can start off with any pattern that has like um, a shape in it. So let's try to stay away from hearts and stars. Let's do simple shapes like circles, triangles, um, you could do a diamond, you could do a rectangle. So I'm going to do kind of like a diamond rectangle. I'm going to start off with a kind of a triangle shape and then I'm going to do another triangle shape on the bottom. So I'm going to do that again. I'm kind of going to flip it. I'm going to go all the way up with it. And go ahead and draw it even if it goes off your paper. Okay, so I have that kind of diamond rectangle shape. Next, I'm going to do circles. So I'm going to go ahead and do circles right here. So I'm going to start off with a half circle. So it's going off the page. Then a small circle, then a big circle, small, big, small, and then I'm going to do a half circle. Okay, so whatever I do here, I'm going to go to this side and do the same thing. So start off with a big circle, small, big, small, big, small big. Alright, so now we're going to work on our last pattern over here. So whatever pattern we do on that side, we're going to do on this side as well. So let's go ahead and do a zigzag line. So we're going to go down, up, side to side, all the way down. So it's important that you fill up your whole page of your paper to give you the best amount of space to do your assignment. All right, now that we have our patterns, we're going to go back in and make some of these double lines. So with our circles, we're going to add another line inside going around. It's almost like it's making it a donut. And do that to the other side. Now we're going to go ahead and do that to our zigzag. We're going to make this a double line. So just draw another line next to it. Just one line next to it. And I'll show you why we're going to do that in a few moments. 
So I'll go ahead and do it on this side. Now let's go ahead and do it for the middle. Gotta sharpen my pencil. So go ahead and draw like a square inside of our diamond. Now that we have our double lines, we're going to add some additional shapes back into our mud cloth. So maybe for our diamonds, we can add maybe a circle or you could add a square in the middle. I'm going to do a circle. Remember, I got to go all the way down. It's like a pattern. Maybe for here, you could add another circle inside. I think I'm going to add a triangle on the outside going both ways. Looks like a bow tie. Okay, so remember whatever I did here, I gotta do this side. Maybe on this side, let's add some more, maybe these triangles or circles. I'm gonna do circles, so I'm gonna do circle, and then I'm gonna do a circle on the other side. So circle. Just like before, whatever I do on this side, I'm going to jump over here and do it on this side. If it goes off your page, it's okay. This one has a lot more zigzags. Alright, so just make sure you try to add some additional design, like how we added the circles or the triangles. You could also add something inside of your circles if you wanted to. I'm just going to leave them plain, and in a few seconds, I'm going to show you what you're going to do next. All right, for this assignment, I want you to start off with crayons, and I want you to start off with a black crayon. Now I have a black crayon here, or I have a little black crayon. So black crayons would work best. No markers, no color pencils, no paint for right now. You may be able to use paint later, but I'm gonna show you that in a little bit. So you're gonna take your black crayon, whatever black crayon you have, and you're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna do my lines first. I'm going to color inside my lines. I'm kind of pressing kind of hard just because I want to make sure I fill it in. So there's one line. You guys might be better at crayons than I am. I struggle with controlling them sometimes. Okay, so there's that one. Now if you don't have a black crayon, you could use um, a, a brown. You could use brown too. Alright, so now that we have our lines done, we're going to pick some things from the middle that we want to make black. So the only colors that you can use for this assignment are going to be brown, different browns, black, and white. Um, and that's because the mud cloth doesn't have a lot of color in it because it's made out of mud. So think about the different colors in mud. It's mostly brown, has some black in it. So right here I have my colors. Um, I'll also get a white in a second. Um, and those are the only colors that you can use. So hold on one second and I'm gonna go grab my white. So let's start off with the middle section and coloring it. So figure out what you want to be black, brown. You can use a little yellow or white. I have a big white for right now um, to use. So I'm going to do, I'm going to take my black crayon and I'm going to color in my 
line, my double line. Now, if you want to do this in paint, you could do it in paint. But I would suggest doing it in crayon instead. No marker, just crayon. Crayon or paint. All right, now that I have that done, I'm gonna move into maybe adding, making this brown. Jump to the side, make this side brown. You could make your sides different from each other. Remember, we're staying to browns. You can use yellow, black, and white. You could also use gray if you have gray. I think I'm also going to make my dot black. Now, you don't have to color with white. If you want to just leave it white, we could just leave it white. So I'm actually just going to leave the middle white uh, of these. All right, so I'm going to go to the next one. I'll go to this one next. So first thing I'm going to decide what I want black. I think I want my triangles black. Now whatever I did on this side, I gotta go over here and do it on this side too. Then I'm going to do brown. I think brown for my circle line. yellow and then I'm also going to do my middles black and then I'm going to leave the rest white So whatever I do on this side, I'm going to go ahead and do it on this side. All right, then I'm going to move to my last set of patterns. I'm going to start on this side this time. Um, I'm going to start off with black. I think I'm going to do black for the circles. And then I'm going to do brown for the outline or the double line. And then I'm going to do yellow for one of the inside on this side. It's okay if it's a little messy. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and do the other side.
Now I'm going to show you how to do the same project but with paint. Just as a reminder, you're only using the colors black, brown, yellow, and white. Next, I'm going to outline just my main lines with my marker, a big Sharpie marker. Now, if you don't have a Sharpie marker, you could use crayon still. Don't use a water color mark a marker, so like don't use Crayola. I would use a crayon uh, to do your black. <clears throat> then I'm going to color in with my black marker everything I want black. Now if I have large spaces, I'll do that with paint, but any small spaces that I want to be with black, I'm going to do now. So small things like circles. Maybe the square. Because it's hard to paint really small, even with the small brush with the watercolor. So I'm going to do all that stuff with my marker. I did forget to do some of my double outlines, so I'm going to go ahead and do those now. So maybe I'll do those in marker.
right, so now I'm going to start painting. Need brush. I'm going to use this brush. So I have a brush here, and then I also have some paint. Get my brush nice and wet. I'm going to start off with brown. And then I'm going to pick what I want to be brown first. So I think I want these squares to be brown. I'm going to switch brushes. I like a bigger brush because it has more bristles to collect water. And watercolor works really well if you have a lot of water on your brush. So when you're painting, just slow down. Take your time. Make sure you have water on your brush. You're only using the colors that we <laughs> used for the other one. So brown, black, and yellow. If your paint is looks sticky, then you're not using enough water. Another tip is when you're painting, don't paint right next to each other. So I'm going to let this dry before I paint uh, the part around it. Now if you want to leave something white, you could just leave it white. Now you can't leave everything white. You still got to do some brown, some black, some yellow. Now whatever you do to one side, you got to do it to the other side. Alright, so now that I did the brown, <clears throat> I think I'm going to take yellow. And I'm going to make these yellow. A lot of people would say, you don't have a lot of yellow left. And I do. I actually do because uh, that yellow is hard. So when I put water in it, I actually still get yellow. So it's actually still a lot in there. You just have to put water in your watercolor to get that color. Okay, so I'm going to do this side now. Anytime I need to grab more water, I grab more water. Now I'm going to wait a little bit before I do those triangles and those circles. Now I'm going to do some more yellow, but I'm going to do it in my triangle. Now I'm going to wait a few moments before I keep painting. So you can always pour a blow on it. You just don't want to get too close to it if it's still drying. So. I'm actually going to do the outside here. I'm going to do that brown. So I shouldn't really get close to my triangle inside. Now if you rush, that's when we tend to have problems in terms of getting too close to where we painted. Now because I have this kind of barrier between me and yellow, I'm going to do black. Grab some black. Now your black's going to look a little gray and that's okay. You can use gray for this. Here, let me 
sorry. <clears throat> Alright, so now this part is getting pretty dry, so I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to leave it alone actually. Um, I am going to color my triangles here brown, so just a little bit of brown in there. But I'm going to leave the other side of this white, I'm going to leave it white. And that's it.